All right, it is uh, 6 o'clock. I'll call this June 20th meeting of the Andalusia City Council to order. If you will, please stand and join Council Mount as he leads us in the prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. May we pray. As we come here tonight, we humbly acknowledge your power. We know you are a loving Father by the good deeds that you bestow upon us. We are thankful for our city, state, and nation. Thankful for the soldiers that give so much to keep us free. We pray that you will show us the way forward. We ask that you give us the strength to do thy will. We ask these things in thy name. Amen. 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 Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I want to welcome everyone to our June 20th meeting. Remind everyone that we meet on the first and third Tuesday of each month, unless otherwise uh, announced, uh, with the workshop starting at 5 o'clock and then the regular session starting here in the chambers at uh, 6 o'clock. Invite anyone who's interested in uh, your city government to come and join us. Members of the council, you have before you the minutes of our meeting of June the 6th for consideration. May I make a motion that we approve the minutes as presented for our June 6, 2017 meeting. All right, you heard Mr. Mount's motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second by Mr. Powell. Any further discussion, questions, or comments? All in favor, please indicate by raising your right hand. Any opposed, same sign. That's all the unfinished business we have. Under new business, uh, item five, a is to consider approval and acceptance of our 2016 uh, fiscal year audit. Uh, we had that presented to us last at our last council meeting in detail. We had the auditing firm here with their representatives and went through the audit in some detail. And the council members have all had a copy uh, of the uh, of the draft audit to review. Uh, since our first meeting in June. So I would uh, put it to you tonight if uh, we would like to go ahead and adopt and approve this audit because we've got some business matters that we need to take care of and we need our final audit in place before we can do that. So I recommend to you that, that you approve the 2016 audit as presented to you at the last council meeting. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the 2016 audit report as presented to us by the auditors, which was an unqualified opinion, which is the best that you can get. All right, sir. I have a motion by Mr. Powell. Do we have a second? I have a second. Second by Mr. Wells. Any further comments, questions, or comments? I would, I would add to what uh, Mr. Powell said that uh, th this is an excellent audit for our 2016 year. It shows the city in an exceedingly strong financial position. Uh, shows that we gained uh, a net gain of over a million dollars last year in the value of, this, of the city, of the assets of the city. Uh, we had an increase in, a total increase in revenue. Uh, we actually spent uh, just slightly, I think it was 2% uh, we, we only spent 2% more money in 2016 than we did in 2015. And I remember in 2015, I think we spent less than we did in 2014. <laughs> so, you know, we, we're, we're basically taking care of this city on level of funding, uh, and we'll be starting on the, the, the budget process as we, as we move forward uh, later this summer. But, uh, we also paid down, uh, I think it was eight eight million dollars. Uh, uh, two point six two six two point six million dollars in long term debt we paid down in in those expenditures. So had a very good year uh, and proud of the audit that we received. And uh, all those in favor of approving the audit, accepting it as presented, please indicate by raising your right hand. 
and that carries unanimously, and I thank you for that. Uh, next item is uh, item 5B, which is a proposal for uh, additions to Candyland. Uh, we had our chamber director and assistant director here uh, at our workshop and put together some proposals for us uh, to uh, add to Candyland for this coming Christmas year. I'm not going to sit here and go through all of those because uh, I won't do them justice because I don't have the, the, the video to show, but maybe we'll have something we can get out before too long on that on our website. <clears throat> but uh, it'll be uh, a, a lot of new attractions added to Candyland, uh, including some decorating on the new, uh, newly acquired Timberman Building, which is the old bank building downtown Andalusia. Uh, we are going to uh, add, add some to the skating rink in, in the amount of the size of the skating rink. We're going to add uh, some to the, uh, the slide, the uh, ice slide. Uh, we're going to uh, add some more uh, fixtures uh, downtown and around uh, Springdale, Christmas fixtures, make some additional changes. Uh, the full budget for the full budget for that is $133,759. Now, a good portion of that we will re we will receive in donations and revenue that we will make during the Christmas season uh, at Candyland and at the skating rink and the, down here at Springdale. But in order to get this material coming to us and have it ready to put up for the Christmas season, we need to order, the, order that stuff right away uh, to get it in line so it'll be here in time for, for the Christmas season. So I recommend to you that we go ahead and, and authorize that expenditure to be made. Part of that will be spent in this fiscal year and part of it will be spent in next fiscal year. And we can take that out of our capital account because it's a capital investment. All of these items that I'm talking about here are per basically per purchasing uh, items that will, and I call them items, but uh, uh, fixtures that we will be able to continue to use for many years in the future. It's not just use them up one year and they're gone. They'd be, they could be used for many, many years. So I recommend to you that we go ahead and move forward on that, take the funding out of the capital uh, account for this year, the, this year's budget. Uh, we've got enough money there to cover what we'll have to spend this fiscal year, and then the rest of it would come out of next fiscal year. Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve the budget as presented to us by our chamber director tonight. All right. You heard the motion. Do we have a second? I have a second. I have a second by Mr. Wells. Any further uh, discussion, questions, or comments? All in favor, please indicate by raising your right hand. Any opposed, same sign. Thank you for that. Uh, we need to uh, talk about a new date for our council meet, uh, first meeting in July because that happens to, hap happens to occur on July the 4th, uh, which of course is a holiday. And it's, we talked about upstairs moving it to 6 o'clock uh, on, excuse me, to 5 o'clock on July the 6th. And the meeting Best, this particular meeting only would be held upstairs in the workshop room, all, and we will have, not have a workshop session. We'll just have a regular session in the upstairs workshop, and then when the meeting's over, we'll adjourn it up there and not come down here. So that's the recommendation to be the, the first meeting in July be moved from uh, the 4th at 6 o'clock to the 6th at 5 o'clock. Um, I make that motion. All right, Mr. <coughs> Mr. Wells makes that motion. Do we have a second? I second. Second by Mr. Sconyers. Any further discussion, questions, or comments? All in favor of the motion, please indicate by raising your right hand. And that is approved unanimously, and I thank you for that. Uh, I want to, I'm getting these other things out of the way real quickly. I know I skipped one up there. I'm going to go back and get it in just a second. Uh, WSFA TV. Uh, general manager and some of his staff came down a couple of weeks ago and met with, with me and uh, and our, our city clerk, city treasurer, 
about putting one of their cameras on top of the First National Bank slash uh, uh, Timberman building. Many of you are familiar with this uh, camera that's used around the state at other locations. I know they've got one in Troy. I know they've got one in Alex City. They've got a couple in the Montgomery area. I think they have one in Selma. Uh, but they're very excited about the possibility of having a camera in Andalusia, uh, in, in the southern part of their viewing area. And they're particularly excited about the site being on top of the Timberman building because that will give them a tremendous view of all around Andalusia and basically uh, this whole part of, of Covington County. Uh, they, they will operate the camera. Uh, we would purchase the camera. I say we, the city, would purchase the camera. It would be, uh, it would belong to WSFA TV, but we would get a lot of free advertising for our city and a lot of notoriety, I think, uh, with, that, with that camera being used, uh, particularly in the area downtown uh, around the square. So the cost would be $15,000 and that will cover us for three years. And uh, that, that amount would be paid up front and they would purchase the equipment, they would install it and would operate it and, uh, and would be no cost to, to the city beyond that in the providing of what little electricity they, they will use uh, in operating the camera. It's, a, it's the latest uh, high tech uh, camera can give a 360 degree uh, view of the entire area and would be manipulated and operated out of Montgomery. And the city would be given credit uh, for providing the space and the camera. So I recommend to you that we do it. I think it's worth uh, over three years. It's certainly worth $15,000 in free uh, advertising for our city. And in fact, it'd be worth a lot more than that. Mr. Mayor, I make a motion that we accept and agree with the camera from WSFA Skyview camera costing $15,000. Money be taken from contingency. Contingency. Okay, thank you, ma'am. All right, we had a motion by Ms. Griffin. Do we have a second? I second. Second by Mr. Sconyers. Any further discussion, question, or comments? All in favor, please indicate by raising your right hand. Thank you for that. Okay, I'm going back up to uh, item 5C, uh, resolution 2017-15, uh, assessing cost of an abatement of, on unsafe properties and dangerous buildings. Uh, this is for a parcel, uh, two parcels, one on, uh, each owned by the Tisdall Family Properties, Inc. And uh, one that was located on uh, South uh, Three Knot Street and the other was located on uh, Pear Street in Andalusia. Uh, the cost for the property on Pear Street, 101 Pear Street, which was the complete removal of a dangerous building, which was the old Mallet Drugstore building, was $34,902.11. <coughs> the other parcel was on 201 South Three Knot Street, and that uh, was the old, what is called the old Opera House. Uh, the work on that building, which included uh, uh, sealing up the building and making it uh, uh, safe and waterproof, uh, and some painting that had to be done uh, to seal up uh, some bare wood that was on the exterior, closing up access to the building uh, from birds and other, uh, other animals, uh, was $17,461.89. Anyone who is here with an interest in that property want to make a comment about this, question this, make any comments at all? Uh, I would ask uh, Mr. Andy Wiggins, uh, you're familiar with the, these two numbers that I've read here, Mr. Wiggins. Uh, are you familiar with the, how these numbers came, came about as far as the, the amount of money for the, both of these properties? Yes, sir, you can come down. Yes, sure. If you look at the attached sheets to the resolution, you'll see a breakdown of the cost on uh, each of those properties. You'll see on Pear Street, uh, we had White Sasser Construction that helped us with the demolition to take down the building at $10,000.
Bullard Excavating and McIntyre Builders uh, were the, we actually rented their trucks to remove the debris. They had large dump trucks that we didn't have. So we rented those trucks from those individuals or companies to uh, help remove the debris with our, with our forces. Sunbelt Rental was a piece of equipment that we uh, rented to help take the building down. Farmers Co-op was uh, to oversee after we got the property level back out, the dirt level back out. Uh, that uh, Christian and Christian is part of the legal expenses, which we're allowed to add to the abatement. Uh, you'll see Andalusia Utilities. We had to remove uh, a couple of light fixtures uh, during the process and put them back. And then you'll see the City of Andalusia Landfill and the $10,000 was the cost to dispose of all the debris in our landfill. And at the very end, you'll see 11.11% .11 for the county handling expenses. And that's what the county handles to assess this to the taxes which brings it to the total of 34902 cents. All right, in your opinion, is that a reasonable, all those charges there, fair and reasonable cost? Yes, sir. Okay. All right, what about the one on South Three Knot Street? And the one on South Three Knot Street, uh, Parker Metal Construction was uh, for some of the, the windows and trim work that they, and gutters that they provided us. McIntyre Builders was the contractor that we uh, contracted with to come in and, and do a lot of the work. You'll see the rental, uh, equipment rental that we had to use to, to do the work. And then you'll see Sherwin Williams, Marvin's, Rhett Butler, Milled Wood, and uh, those are the paints and stains and other things that we used on the building. Again, Christian and Christian, their fees, the certified letters that we had to send out, along with the 11.11% of the county expenses, which brings that grand total to $17,461.89. Uh, and I feel these are, are, are a very fair assessment. Are they re reasonable in your opinion? Yes, sir. All right. Or does any of the council members have any questions or comments about uh, whether or not these uh, these charges should be applied uh, against those properties for collection. Is there anyone else in here in the, in the council chamber that has anything you want to say or any questions you want to ask? All right, hearing nothing, I would put to you that we should adopt the resolution. We need a motion and a second. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, I move that we approve resolution 2017-15. All right, we have a motion. Assessing those abatement costs. Excuse me, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, a motion by Mr. Powell, do we have a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Wells. Any further discussion, questions, or comments? <clears throat> All in favor of adopting the resolution, please indicate by raising your right hand. <clears throat> Any opposed, same sign. And that carries. All right, the next, uh, we have two uh, additional resolutions related, relating to uh, abatement of unsafe properties causing a public nuisance. And we are going to have a public hearing on that. And we're going to need, we're going to have to suspend the rules. And I'll ask the uh, clerk if he'll call the roll. If you're in favor of suspending the rules, <coughs> You need to vote aye or yes. If you're against it, vote no or nay. Uh, will you call the roll? Mr. Mary Clerk? Johnson. Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. All right. That being a unanimous vote as is required by state law, we are now, uh, we will now suspend the rules and uh, take up this business uh, of these two uh, resolutions. And I'm going to ask our city attorney uh, to preside over this uh, public hearing. So, Mr. Christensen, it's, okay. you got the ball. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, in your packet, members of the council, you have copies of the lease pendants that's been filed in each of these properties. 
Uh, I will let you know that those were also served on the people that are listed in there by certified mail. Uh, there were a couple of them that, that either refused service or did not pick them up, but they were sent to them, which is what our ordinance requires. And there was also a notice that ran in the newspaper, the Andalusia Star News, on May 2nd, May 9th, May 16th, and May 23rd, so that everyone has been properly notified according to our ordinance. And I'm going to call on Mr. Wiggins to, to answer some questions, and I believe that he has some photos also that can be, be shown of, of these properties. And we'll take up the 110 Jernigan Street property first. Sure. Here we go. Are each of y'all familiar where this property is located? I'm not. Where, where is Jernigan Street? It's right beside, uh, it's come down South Cotton. Uh, farmers Co op. On the corner of the road. Farmers Co op. The Co op. We'll go well. Excuse me. I'm going to for you. Okay. Uh, it's just, it's just past Will Co op. Okay. Um, as you can see, this is this is an aerial view of the property on one uh, Again, you can see that it is a group You said one to one, but you meant one ten, right? One ten You can see the roof is collapsed. Uh, you can see the freestanding walls. This is a, you know showing the, the windows. Um, some of the interior of a lot of the stuff that's stored. Okay, uh, and uh, on page three, four, and five, we've got 16 different conditions there that are in violation of the ordinance. Are those all correct? Okay. And is it your opinion that this is a, a public nuisance that needs to be abated? Yes. Okay. And um, is it is it feasible for this property to be repaired given the value of, of what's left of the building? Yes. Okay. So is it your recommendation <coughs> to the council that this property be uh, ab abated by being demolished? Right. If it's okay with the council, we'll we'll go ahead and, and move to. Can the I ask next, next one question? Property, and then and then we'll turn it back over to the council if, if anybody. I want to ask one question. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes. He he stated it was his opinion that the building should be demolished, but also removed from the site. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Okay. okay. And and okay. And is. Um, I believe this is Mr. Lee, is that? Okay, uh, it, it, and Mr. Lee is one of the owners of the, the property. Um, be before moving on, I'm sorry, I didn't see you back there, Mr. Lee. Um, you can tell the council what, whatever you think about the, the property now, and we'll give you the floor. We started this morning, bring everything out. Most of everything on the property is just about out inside of the city and stuff, ticket. So all of a sudden, we're all just moving. So we have to get everything, you know, start the uh, demolition on it, get it out. And uh, basically, the whole inside is out at this moment. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, are, are you familiar with what's been done, Mr. Wiggins? Or? Uh, I did drive by today and see, I did uh, notice that there was work going on there. Um, and at this point, tried to reach a mediation agreement with the owner and uh, had been an unsuccessful. Um, I understand that, that they are trying to remove the debris from inside the building, but yet we're, we're still sitting here not aware of what any future plans will be on the building or what the intent moving forward is. Um, I mean, can you answer what any of you have Uh, we talked about living uh, 
I think I'm going to recommend to the council is that they go ahead and and abate and if in the meantime you and this city building folks can come to some sort of agreement if they agree that you've done things properly they can administratively defer actually demolishing the building ourselves but I, I think because this has been going on for a number of months that we we would like to have this done, and, and then there's an, a period of time where we can give you a little bit more time if, if something is happening on it. And so that's, that's, that's what my recommendation is going to be to this, the council, and it's, it's up to them to do what, what they want. But my I'm going to bring before the council that before we bought the property, the property was likely in conditions then it was like after we bought it for like a couple of months, then we started getting there. You know, I mean, that's the problem. Yeah. I hate it. You know what I mean? But why did it make a condition? Nobody said anything while somebody else owned it. Then, then while we get the time we purchased, then we started getting there. I mean, that's, you know, how did that happen? You know, so, I don't know. But now we're doing something. We're trying to get it, we're trying to comply with the city. And I think that should be. You know, if it was told me last year by Mr. Ryan, I reached it. So we don't want to get this point. Mitch, I've never been to Washington. I'm here. And I, and I told him that we are, what you need to do is let me know what's going on so I can proceed with what we're doing. So he got a guy to sit here for him to do it. And so, so we started in the morning. And basically, the whole inside of the building is gone and it's out. And it's back there. The only part is there. It's the part that's in the back of this house. Yeah, yeah, you can demolish all that. So we're in the process of getting everything to the house. So I don't know where to do it besides cleaning it up. Well, and, and there are some some time limits on this. If the council does abate it, that you have some time limits, and they're set out in in the, the paperwork that we, we sent to you by certified mail. Um, but um, if, if the council does abate and you can work something out with Mr. Wiggins and Mr. Moore, uh, they, they, they can give you a, a little bit of time to do it. I, I, I think the important thing is that you don't just, just stop. If, you've, if, if you stop and nothing happens, then the city will, will probably move ahead if that's what the council tells us to do. I
forward with the inspection. Uh, if they approve the abatement tonight, that doesn't mean that you can stop working. What we need to do is sit down and come up with a uh, mediation plan and an agreement between you and the city, between you and the city that outlines, like in the list pending, will outline how long you have to accomplish each of these things that we've done. Right. And, you know, that's with everybody. Thank you, Mr. Lee. And anything else that you wanted to say? Okay, thank you. I don't see anybody else here. Now I'm looking to make sure, but I don't see anybody else here on that property. So if it's okay, we'll move on to the, the 304 Ninth Street in Andalusia. Can you show us some pictures from that, please, Mr. Wiggins? This is a residential structure. The pictures are not real great. The condition of this house is, is pretty bad. As you can see, part of the exterior wall is missing. Uh, you can see the, hopefully you can see the interior that the floor is gone. Uh, and the house is in really disrepair. Uh, you can see that's the sunlight coming through the roof. Uh, you can see that's the that was bathroom. The floor is collapsed. The roof is collapsed. Haven't, have had problems with people going in and out of the structure. Um, that shows us that there have been activity of people staying in that residential structure. Um, okay, and Mr. Wiggins, in, on the lease pendants for that property, um, beginning at the bottom of page two and continuing on over to page four, there are 12 different violations of the ordinance are, are all of those correct yes. okay and it is it, is it your opinion that this property is a public nuisance yes. and is this property uh, worth repairing yes. okay so is it your recommendation with this property also that it be demolished and the, the material hauled away to the, the landfill yes. okay are there Anyone here to, to speak on uh, 304 Ninth Street? Okay. Now, are there any questions from the council for Mr. Wiggins? Yeah, why is the utilities board on both, titled on both of these? Our ordinance requires us to uh, notify them. Part of that is uh, that there may be uh, utilities bills that are owed, which would give them a par partial lien on the property. If we find a, a mortgage holder or anything, we're, we're, we're required to try and, and notify them also. And the utilities board may have things like meters on the property. It's, uh, we, we, we just notify them as a part of the, the requirements of our okay. ordinance. Thank you. Uh, I'll just make one comment to, to Mr. Wiggins. Uh, is if, uh, if we move forward on the, on the property on Jernigan Street, that uh, that try to work with Mr. Lee and and the others to give them a reasonable period of time to to do the work if if it can be worked out kind of like we've done on some others. Uh, again, we're not Mr. Mr. Lee. We don't we're not trying to take your property. We don't we don't want to tear it. We don't you know we we want you to take care of it. But we got to take action. But we won't give you time. But it's going to be a it's going to be an ending time on it. At the end of that time, if you hadn't done it, then the city will contract to have it done. All right. Sir. And we will, we will work together on that to make sure that we give them the amount of time that we've afforded everyone else in this process. Okay. Okay. Um, Mr. Mayor, I believe Did, that, you all have a that that question. If, if there are no other questions. No, um, I'm in favor of what you said. Okay. I think if there are no other questions, then Mr. Mayor, I'd recommend we close the public hearing and, and allow the council to, to act on the resolutions. All right. The, uh, public, the public hearing portion of the meeting is now closed. We're back into regular session. Uh, 
Members of the council, you have before you two resolutions, 2017-16 and 2017-17. Uh, I think we need to have a motion and a second on each one of those. We'll have, in other words, adopt 16 first and then adopt 17. So do we have a motion on uh, 16? I'll make the motion. All right, Mr. Wells makes the motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Mr. Mount makes a second. Any further discussion, questions, or comments? All in favor of approving the resolution, please indicate by raising your right hand. And I believe that is unanimous. Uh, <clears throat> now, uh, we need a motion and a second, uh, if you choose to adopt resolution 2017-17, which is the property on 9th Street. I make that motion. All right, Ms. Griffin makes a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Powell. Any further discussion, questions, or comments? All in favor of adopting the resolution, please indicate by raising your right hand. And that carries as well. Okay, I believe that is uh, all the business that we have to come before this meeting. Does anybody have anything, any council members have anything you want to bring to the meeting? All right, hearing nothing, we will stand adjourned.